In the last episode, part one, I was discussing how the anointing screen has been created for King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla. So I was discussing the fact that there is a tree that is fashioned after the stained glass that is in St. James Palace, the stained glass window in there. And the tree being the king of trees, which is the royal English oak tree. The same trees, they have 2,000 year old trees called Gog and Magog in England, in Glastonbury. I showed that in a prior video and I did a whole story on that subject. So I'm going to talk about the three sided screen that blocks off the entire view of even seeing the monarch being anointed. It's considered a sacred ceremony and that's why they do this. They held something that was like a Jewish wedding canopy known as a chuppah over Queen Elizabeth II at her coronation. But that had open sides and it represents the presence of God above you. So this canopy is different. It's not a canopy per se. It's a screen that's a three-sided screen and it's got an open side towards the altar. And so I have selected out of my research the things the Lord was helping me put together that I'm going to share with you that's going to lead into some places you never imagined. And this is going to say it all. There's going to be maybe a third part of this. My battery only lasts for so long. Um, if I had another battery, I could keep going, but I'm going to have to charge it at some point. So this is part two. So I was showing you about the King's Royal Cipher, which I had revealed from my dream a long time ago. And then when the cipher was created this year after the Queen died, that's when the Holy Spirit was saying that is the mark of the beast. That is the mark of the king. A beast is a king according to the prophet Daniel as I've told you but I have to reiterate and so Israel is going to put a king on their throne as the anointed one, somebody who's a military leader and King Charles III is the head of the royal forces. So he is also the patron of the Islamic Center, the mosque in London. He is also having the Jewish rabbis, uh, Rabbi Mervis, spend the night at his home in Clarence House the night before the coronation. Ironically, the night before the coronation is the second Passover. Remember, I told you that the Lord had revealed to me that whole thing about that being the night of watching for the redemption, watching for the Lord to come down and save you. That was the night that Jesus told his disciples in the garden, of, couldn't you just watch one hour? So we'll, could it be the second Passover that we will be taken up? I don't know. But ironically, that night of the second Passover, which is your second chance to participate in the Passover Seder. It's biblical, it's in the Bible, and this lunar eclipse, the blood moon, is coming that night. So when you are looking up and watching on that night of the second Passover, there will be a blood moon lunar eclipse just before the coronation of King Charles III. So I told you about the screen and how the design is the tree, which I believe is the royal English oak tree. It's the king of trees in England. And I told you about the king's royal cipher being at the base of the trunk of the tree near where the roots are. And how John the Baptist was telling the leaders of the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the leaders of the temple, which is going to come about in the last days that these same 
antichrist spirit that's going on with the ultra orthodox in Israel they want to be the world court the world uh, supreme court and set themselves as the judges of the entire world with a one world government bringing all the religions to Jerusalem having 70 representatives of the 70 nations in a Sanhedrin building that they already have the plans for. I saw it with my own eyes, touched the plans. I saw it when they came here and showed it. I've shown that in previous videos. So they're going to have a king that they're going to see as their anointed one to reestablish the throne of David with just a basic man with a military background that is a prince and now has become the king. When he becomes king and he's coronated, he receives all power and authority as the king. And the people, as I've said many times, but I guess a lot of people did not pick up on it, that they have to pay homage to the king at the coronation ceremony, which means that they have to uh, pledge allegiance to that king, which is why I told you if he becomes king, over the Jewish nation also, the people will have no say with either a parliamentary monarchy that would leave the prime minister in charge um, in place, as well as the president, but the monarch would be the head of the whole thing. So it's the reestablished monarchy. The deadly wound that was healed by a sword was the ancient monarchy of the kings of Israel and Judah. And now in the last days, the prophecy is continuing and it's revived. It's like it comes back to life and that deadly wound of the monarchy is restored when Israel puts this king upon their throne. At the investiture of King Charles III, he becomes the anointed one. He is anointed in a sacred ceremony and this three-sided screen with the tree with the royal cipher that's the mark of the king the mark of the beast and it also includes the stamp of the leopard head leopard face that transition from a lion with the crown into a leopard Charles has several names and one of them is Arthur and that means bear so he's also, he's the lion, he's the leopard, he's the bear, and he is the dragon of his investiture under the flag of Wales as the Prince of Wales. So this tree down near the roots, down near the base of the tree, and all of the nations that he has to rule in the Commonwealth, each one of their names is on a leaf on this tree. and. John the Baptist had said, the axe is already laid to the root of the tree. A corrupt tree cannot bear good fruit. If a tree does not bear good fruit, it is cut down and thrown into the fire. This is a warning. It pertained to the ancient monarchy of Israel. There was no king anymore in Israel. But when it's restored, it's not going to be because they chose King Yeshua, Jesus. They're going to set their own king on that throne. The one that they see is the anointed one, which King Charles III is at his coronation. So Now let me get on with the three-sided screen. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the anointing screen that went from being like a wedding hoopah with God above you to this three-sided screen. Here is the royal cipher at the base of the tree. The royal English oak tree. Keep that in mind. So let me just say this. London, April 28th. A new screen will provide absolute privacy. Now before, the hoopah is supposed to represent that people can come in and be part of the wedding party and the king is considered married to the people and the land that he rules over. So not having the actual God above us wedding hoopah is a change. So you're supposed to be able to see into the hoopah. 
just like you could at Queen Elizabeth's sacred ceremony. But they made it where they shut off the TV cameras because that was the first time ever that that sacred part of the ceremony was ever seen in the history of the world because television was new. So it says... A new screen will provide absolute privacy during the most sacred part of next week's coronation service for King Charles III, ensuring the eyes of the world will not see the monarch being anointed, Buckingham Palace and its makers said. The three-sided screen will shield Charles when he is anointed with holy oil, consecrated in Jerusalem, that was from the olives, from the olive groves, that pieces of land that his grandmother owned and he will be anointed with this olive oil and other mixture on his hands breast and head shortly before he's crowned at London's Westminster Abbey on May 6th sustainability a long-held passion of the king is a key theme of the design even down to using poles made from a wind-blown and it would be a royal English oak tree from the royal estate at Windsor, originally planted by the Duke of Northumberland in 1765, and special biodegradable thread. The king's royal cipher that I told you was the mark of the beast, the mark of the king, is at the root of the tree, where John the Baptist said, The axe is already laid to the root of the tree, and any tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The oldest living tree in what remains of the Great Park at Windsor Great Park is a pedunculate oak named King Ofa's Oak after the 8th century Mercian king and is said to date back to 710 AD. It has the largest girth, more than 36 feet of the ancient oaks in the park. And it says that it is a pollarded pedunculate oak, Quercus rober, which grows on the territory of Windsor Great Park, Berkshire, England. And the trunk splits three feet and one inch above ground, leaving several enormous offshoots. The oak is at least 1,300 years old, according to experts, and potentially as old as 1,500 years. Both of these numbers would make the tree the oldest oak in the United Kingdom. And of course, um, I would say that those other trees, Gog and Magog, those oaks are said to be 2,000 years old. And Gog caught fire, but is still standing and burned, so it looks like a dead tree. Windsor Great Park is a royal park of 5,000 acres, including a deer park to the south of the town of Windsor on the border of Berkshire and Surrey in England. It is adjacent to the private 650 acres home park, which is near the castle. The park was for many centuries the private hunting ground of Windsor Castle and dates primarily from the mid 13th century. Historically, the park covered an area many times the current size known as Windsor Forest, Windsor Royal Park, or its current name. And the park is managed and funded by the Crown Estate. It was April 27th of 2017 that it was written that a 2,000-year-old Glastonbury oak tree, a royal king oak, called Gog, went up in flames. It was thought to be more than 2,000 years old and was damaged in a fire in 2017. In England, the oak is a national symbol of strength. Couples were wed under the ancient oaks in Oliver Cromwell's time. Oak is the emblem of many environmental groups, including the Woodland Trust, of which King Charles III is involved. So, when I was looking up the term three-sided, as in the anointing screen that's not the wedding hoopa canopy for this coronation, this three-sided screen literally means a trilateral figure. Trilateral. And now that takes me into very 
revealing things. This brought me to the Trilateral Commission. Trilateral Commission, Organization of Private Citizens, founded in 1973, principally by American banker David Rockefeller. The Trilateral Commission is headed by three regional chairs for Europe, North America, and Asian Pacific region, who are assisted by several deputies and an executive committee. The entire membership meets annually, the location rotating among the three regions to consider reports and debate strategy, regional and national meetings, are held throughout the year. In the late 1970s, for example, many former Trilateral Commission members held senior positions in the cabinet of U.S. President Jimmy Carter. Globalization. Integration of the world's economies, politics, and cultures. German-born American economist Theodore Levitt has been credited with having coined the term globalization in 1983 in his article titled The Globalization of Markets. The phenomenon is widely considered to have begun in the 19th century following the advent of the Industrial Revolution. From right to left, maybe because it meets behind closed doors, maybe because it's packed with powerful international capitalists, maybe because one of its principal founders was banker David Rockefeller, whose surname reads like 666 to those who demonize the Eastern establishment. Whatever the reason, some folks just suspect the worst of the Trilateral Commission. These are not the types of people who get together for innocuous chit-chat, says Jim Tucker, who writes for the Spotlight newspaper of the Washington-based Liberty Lobby. Let us survey the thickets of anti-trilateralism. With the takeover by the Trilateral Commission of the United States government, through Jimmy Carter, there was an explosion of the drug culture and related degeneracy throughout the campaign. It is largely an unspoken reality, the book continues, that the bankers and the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, encourage dope growing and traffic as profitable free enterprise for the blood-sucking bankers. Co-conspirators, listen, according to LaRouche, include the British monarchy, the Soviet Union, and Zionist lobby. Three years ago, on the stage of a crowded rock and roll club in downtown Washington, a young black man in paramilitary garb asked a largely white audience, who runs this world? After he paused, he said, the Trilateral Commission, that was Professor Griff, then a member of the rap group Public Enemy. In a subsequent newspaper interview, Professor Griff mentioned the commission while describing, quote, a wicked global Jewish conspiracy. Now, you know the Antichrist spirit is already there in the ultra-Orthodox bills and laws that they wanted passed recently that are against women, are against them having the Torah scroll at the Western Wall to even be able to pray and praise God there. They wanted to also, um, they're persecuting the Reformed Jews and conservative Jews and they want women not to drive and they want to remove the gospel and Jesus' name from Israel altogether. So what we like to think as Christians I love Israel. It's a wonderful place. Everything's great. There is a wicked group. There are the good figs and the bad figs. And the bad figs were really, really bad. So I'm going to come back to Behold the Fig Tree and All the Trees. There's a revelation in there that I was just given. And that's going to be the end of the video, maybe in a third part if my battery runs out. In his 1991 book, The New World Order, Pat Robertson, founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network and a brief challenger for the 1988 Republican presidential nominee, wrote portentously, A single thread runs from the White House to the State Department to the Council on Foreign Relations to the Trilateral Commission to secret societies to extreme New Agers. There must be a new world order. There must be world government, a world police force, world courts, world banking and currency, and a world elite in charge of it all. That will be the king. 
I do not believe that normal men and women, if left to themselves, would spend a lifetime to form the world into a unified whole in order to control it. No, impulses of that sort do not spring from the human heart, or for that matter, from God's heart. Remember, there's no canopy God above you at this coronation ceremony. It's a three-sided trilateral government of the monarchy. Some of the members of these uh, the trilateral commission include Henry Kissinger, includes the executive chairman of MasterCard, includes the vice president of Apple, includes the former prime minister of Ireland, and of course these groups are connected to the Bilderberger group. So we have royal secrets. How Prince Philip and Prince Charles attended Mystery Bilderberg meeting. And this was in 2019. The Bilderberg 2019 was underway and the secretive conference was attended by many members of European royalty including then Prince Charles and Prince Philip who's no longer with us. The Bilderberg Group is a shadowy organization that holds the Bilderberg meeting in a different location every year. It was originally established in 1954 to strengthen U.S.-European relations during the Cold War and prevent another world war. However, it has attracted attention for its secretive ways with reports from the proceedings and lists of its select number of attendees not publicly issued. The Independent had an article, What is the Bilderberg Group and are its members really plotting the New World Order? Okay, we know all of these things have already come to pass. So I'm going to reach back and grab some of these things that you didn't know about what was happening at the time. But it's developed so much more. We had certain horrible things that happened, like the attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan. Why did that happen? Why did 9-11 happen? Why have they tried to take down America? Why is Joe Biden's administration trying to diminish America and bilk the money out and send it to Ukraine? There's a reason why all this is happening. The uh, annual meeting of American and European elite attracts huge amount of suspicion and paranoia. But is it really just an occasional supper club of the Bilderberg group? Are they really plotting the New World Order? Yes. The secretive Bilderberg group gathers for its annual meeting, which is taking place in Montreux, Switzerland. The collective of elite North American and European politicians, business leaders, financiers, academics, the group has attracted a good deal of suspicion over the last half century, with conspiracy theorists confidently asserting that its members are plotting the New World Order and are hell-bent on global domination. Okay, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know here. I'm just preparing you to hear the next part. Protesters who believe the Bilderbergers represent a shadow world government regularly picket their yearly meetups, creating a need for high security at all times, but attendees insist the group is simply a debating society taking place outside the glare of the political spotlight. The group publishes its guest list the day before its annual get-together. And now there's 190 nations involved. Um, this typically consists of broad issues like macroeconomic concerns and the threat of terrorism and cybersecurity. Now this is going to be the most important part to let you know. Not only we know this has been going on for years and years and years, but we didn't know every aspect of everything that was happening. We had bits and pieces, but we just couldn't put it all together, and this is going to put it all together for you. This is LaRouchePub.com. There's published resolutions and other official statements of the Trilateral Commission. On those grounds alone, we are not in the slightest danger of exaggerating in naming Rockefeller and the Congressional Research Service as liars. The Trilateral Commission is committed to terminating democratic republican forms of sovereign government. 
Now, this was written a long time ago, but think about what Joe Biden's been doing to America with the raising of all the gas prices, the food prices, and he's trying to drag us under. The 1975 Tokyo Resolution, drafted by Samuel P. Huntington and set into motion by a series of measures enacted under Trilateral Commission puppet President Jimmy Carter. These measures included congressional apathy in permitting executive orders establishing the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and the Omnibus Banking Act introduced by Representative Henry Roos, Democrat, Wisconsin, giving the Federal Reserve Chairman dictatorial powers over FEMA in case of a national emergency. I want you to see how this was set up from a long time ago. Going back to Jimmy Carter. The Trilateral Commission has been consistently committed to destroying the sovereignty of the United States through no less than the last five years from when this was written. The immediate objective of the Trilateral Commission is to place the monetary, economic, and defense policies of the United States under the dictatorship of the International Monetary Fund, a policy repeatedly stated by Anthony Solomon and others during the Carter administration's systematic wrecking of the U.S. dollar. Now this is continuing on, all this time later. These same world federalist schemes against the United States are outlined in a series of books published on behalf of the New York Council on Foreign Relations by McGraw-Hill Publishing, the 1980s project. These policies were drafted under the direction of key figures including Carter administration cabinet members Cyrus Vance, Brzezinski, and W. Michael Blumenthal. Same policies of, quote, controlled disintegration of the United States economy were massive official documents of the connections by governmental agencies in Italy. Okay, I clipped out certain pieces of this article, the most important parts, but it said President Reagan did not know this important fact because the friends of The Hague have successfully duped the White House into swallowing outright lies on the Propaganda 2 issue. The grand scenario, the central operation which motivates the trilateral accomplices to then assassinate President Reagan and others centers on the orchestration of a financial collapse of the United States and Western Continental Europe. This is what they're working on now. The collapse being orchestrated through the IMF, Switzerland, and London has the narrowest objective of collapsing the values of the U.S. dollar and continental European currencies to the point that the British pound sterling takes over as the sole reserve currency for trade and investment throughout the world. Can you say the mark of the king is coming, the mark of the beast, which is a king? And you won't be able to buy and sell unless you have the king's royal cipher on you? Which I believe will be put on with a laser on the skin, more than likely, in the hand and forehead, just as the Bible states. As I said before, they're already doing the hallmarking, which is the stamping of the king's mark on everything. I showed King Charles III putting the leopard head, his royal mark, which is part of his cipher, and that stamp is also his mark. He put it on the cross that had the fragments of the true cross of Christ that will be paraded in the procession that goes before all of this delegation of the interfaith community, including the Jewish community, Shia, and Sunni Islam, Hindu, um, Baha'i, Zoroastrian, all those people will be marching in the procession and the cross will be there with these two fragments that I believe could actually be pieces of the royal oak tree, which is the king of trees, 
wouldn't it be something and I told you that they found a splinter of an oak tree in the shroud of Turin on the back where his back would have rubbed on the cross and these splinters of the true cross will be where the king hammered his hallmark and they are putting this on stuff with the lasers that's how they're doing the hallmarking lasers are used to resurface the skin they have cold lasers they have um, lasers that are marking with the king's royal cipher already so that means that the British pound sterling takes over as the sole reserve currency for trade and investment throughout the world. So can you see how the king's royal cipher mark will become something that people have to have in order to buy and sell if this is the reserve currency for trade and investment throughout the world? It is that lesser aspect of the matter which defines Chase Manhattan and Paul Volker as traitors to the United States in the most profound sense of treason. The final touches on additional features of the broader plot are to be settled in the context of the marriage of Britain's Prince Charles and Lady Diana when all focuses being brought into the plot are to be represented in London and is to be brief and drawn into the final preparatory phases of the operation. Now, of course, they got rid of Princess Diana because this was not following into their plot and their plan. So something else had to change. They didn't succeed in killing Reagan. They didn't succeed, you know, uh, in many other areas. With 9-11, it didn't bring us down because God was watching over us. The plan is to combine the collapse of the financial system of the United States and most of Western Europe with other crises. To create a global crisis management scenario on the largest and most catastrophic scales. Can you say 2020, 2019, 2020, 2021? What happened? A global crisis. When you were masked up and couldn't speak and you were kept in your homes and all the businesses were collapsing worldwide and children were not going to school and now they can't connect these little children can not connect to you speaking because people were kept their carbon inside their mouth breathing their own carbon because these people don't want you to spew carbon into the air carbon 666 something dear to the heart of King Charles III, who is going to be the leader of the Green Climate Change Initiative. Now, didn't this just happen the last year of Trump's um, presidency? This situation of crisis management to be aided by urban rioting. So in comes the rioters that we had all over the United States that were funded by George Soros and terrorist activities and we saw all of those terrorist activities that are still going on with the shoot-ups of the schools and killing of children okay that is to be used as a pretext for establishing emergency decree governments in the United States and every nation of Western Europe Britain included in Britain Prime Minister then Thatcher was to depart and then Prince Charles was to emerge as a parody of his idol George the third as de facto dictator of Britain okay so they haven't been successful so far but they've committed all of these acts of barbarianism all over the place all over the world so he is supposed to emerge at some point as dictator of Britain and he's about to be coronated should we be concerned I think that John the Baptist has given everyone a warning about the axe is laid to the root of the tree. A corrupt tree cannot bear good fruit. And every tree that does not bear good fruit, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The financial crisis, which is happening now as well, this was written a long time ago, 
is to be used to subject the United States, among other nations, so treated to a dictatorship by decree of the International Monetary Fund. With this blow, listen, the sovereignty of all principal capitalist industrialized nations, excepting Japan, is to be eliminated in substance. The following additional measures are to be implemented as adjuncts to the international dictatorship by the IMF. All of the subjugated nations, all of the subjugated nations are to be submitted to economic policies modeled upon those introduced by N Nazi finance minister Schacht under the Brüning and Hitler regimes. Chancellor Helmut Schmidt warned publicly against the plan to establish a Brüning model dictatorship in Germany. The unemployment problems caused by financial collapse are to be addressed through labor-intensive forced labor programs modeled on the precedent of Nazi concentration camp czar Albert Speer. The governments of the affected nations are to be transformed by aid of emergency decree actions into fascist states modeled on the 1920s Italy Benito Mussolini. In general, these fascist regimes will be governed by socialist international prime ministers, such as the P2-linked Hague protege Bettino Craxel in Italy. Now, this is probably somebody that's long gone, okay? But they were trying to set this up all these years, and they're still trying. The policy of genocide for the third world is to be put immediately into full-scale operation through aid of the IMF. Conditionalities policies promote genocide through famine and epidemic. Can you say C-19? Remember how all of these food factories suddenly burn to the ground, all the trains are derailing, spilling chemicals onto the crops and into the rivers so that the land will be poisoned, so the crops will be poisoned? This is all orchestrated by this evil, wicked group. This is a corrupt tree that will be cut down and thrown into the fire, and I can't reiterate that enough. Okay, so it says, So the full-scale operation through aid of the IMF, conditionalities policies to promote genocide through famine and epidemic, and through orchestration of perpetual states of regional warfare, Ukraine, Syria, Russia, and insurrections in the regions targeted by such agencies such as General Maxwell Taylor's Draper Fund. In Europe, this operation is to be directed to the included purpose of restoring monarchies, such as the House of Savoy for Italy. This is being perpetrated to restore monarchies. Israel is going to restore the monarchy, I told you. They're going to put a throne up with this king on it that's a military man, that's the anointed one, and restore the monarchy of ancient Israel, the one that had the deadly wound by a sword and now is resurrected to live, and this will be the last earthly king before Jesus comes down and destroys all the kingdoms of this world. This is the bait being held out to representatives of royal and aristocratic pretenders. The token figure of reference for this aspect of the operation is the Austrian pretender Duke Otto von Habsburg of the Pan-European Union and Montperlin Society. Habsburg has publicly stated his hope is to become the Emperor of Europe. Well, I think that Prince Charles had once said that he would like to rule Europe. And I tried to look for that comment years later when he was still a prince and couldn't find anything. Everything had been removed off the internet. And this guy wanted to become the emperor of Europe under a system of carved up European nations modeled upon the defunct 
Austro-Hungarian Empire. The system of world federalism so projected is to be federalist on two levels. First, the world is to be divided into regions, Europe, North America, Latin America, the Middle East, Maghreb, Africa, Asia, each with its own currency block and administrative arrangements for the region as a whole. Each of the regions is to be uh, apportioned into a network of chiefly microstates, each based on the limited autonomy of some ethnic or religious distinction as outlined for the Middle East in the Bernard Lewis plan adopted by Henry Kissinger and the Carter administration. The policy behind Brzezinski's coordination of both the bringing of Khomeini to power and the taking of holding of U.S. hostages. So they orchestrated putting those Islamic dictators in power in Iran. Switzerland and the British pound sterling are to be the coordinating controlling force regulating the policies of and conflicts among the various regions. This administration is to be mediated through the International Monetary Fund and beefed up institutions of the United Nations organizations. So I'll say Switzerland and the British pound sterling are to be the coordinating, controlling force regulating the policies and conflicts. To remove stubborn and probable obstacles to this scheme, the plotters allied to the Trilateral Commission intended to eliminate Pope John Paul II. Well, wasn't he killed right after he ruled for one month or something like that? To remove Vatican enmity against Carter's global 2000 genocide proposal which we all saw at the time and wondered, my gosh, are they really going to implement a worldwide genocide? And the answer is, they've already attempted it. We spent 2020, we spent three years with masks on, locked in our homes, not able to travel because they don't want the 666 going into the atmosphere. They don't want you to breathe out. Okay, so it says Carter's Global 2000 Genocide Proposal and American Nationalism Linked President Ronald Reagan. They wanted to take Reagan out. The killing of Reagan had the additional value the plot of the plotters of creating the conditions for emergency decree government of the United States by a de facto junta including Haig and Volcker. And those are the people that they said committed treason. All of the financial and economic scenarios for the listed plot are presently openly proposed by the Trilateral Commission, leading British spokesmen and other relevant parties. The special features of the present situation, which makes the threat to the president so imminent, now this was back when Reagan was president, is the fact that the Trilateraloids successful pressuring of President Reagan to turn himself into a new ill-fated Herbert Hoover has brought the United States to the verge of the greatest financial collapse in our nation's history. The very impetus of the general financial collapse caused by Volcker's October 1979 to July 1981 treasonous monetary's policies has brought events to the point at which the plotters must either give up the scenario or plunge ahead to immediate implementation of the operation. So they didn't succeed at all of these things. 9-11, uh, you know, trying to kill Reagan. They killed Pope John Paul II. They killed Princess Diana. Everything because nothing was working out the way they wanted and they're still trying to. Here's a small sampling of the past elite membership or attendees at the Bilderberg meetings. David Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, Lloyd Benson, Helmut Kohl, Prince Charles, Prince Juan Carlos of Spain, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Dan Quayle, Donald Rumsfeld, Colin Powell, John Edwards, 
I mean, all of these people, George Stephanopoulos, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, then Timothy Geithner, George Soros, Paul Walker, Alan Greenspan, then at the time, Ben Bernanke, former and current chairman of the Federal Reserve, of course, which he's not now, but, okay, World Bank President Robert Zolik and the Heinz family, which John Kerry is a member of, CEO of H.J. Heinz Company. He, he's married to the heiress of the Heinz Company. Don't buy Heinz ketchup or you'll be supporting John Kerry. Peter A. Thiel, co-founder of PayPal. Great. Eric E. Schmidt. I mean, all of these people. All of these people. Rupert Murdoch was behind the firing of Tucker Carlson, Gold, the CEO of Goldman Sachs the chairman of the board of the um, Washington Post Company, Peter Jennings, all of these people, Leslie Stahl, Bill Moyers, Bill and Melinda Gates, many others. The list includes prominent persons in politics, the military, financial institutions, major corporations, academia, and the media. A great many of these people have been tricked into believing that a one world government is a good thing while obviously being unaware of the Luciferians who are really running the show at the top. Why are the WTO and G8 meetings carried in every newspaper, given front page coverings and thousands of journalists in attendance while not a single one covers the Bilderberg Group meetings even though they were annually attended by presidents of the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, Federal Reserve, chairman of the 100 most powerful corporations in the world, such as Dolmer, Chrysler, Coca-Cola, British Petroleum, Chase Manhattan Bank, American Express, Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, Vice Presidents of the United States, Directors of the CIA, they've been orchestrating a lot of this stuff. Bobby Kennedy, okay, his son has been saying the CIA was behind the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And the FBI, general secretaries of NATO, American senators and members of Congress, European prime ministers and leaders of opposition parties, top editors and CEOs of leading newspapers in the world. The answer is very simple because they own and control the mainstream media and you are not told what you are not supposed to know. So when King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla um, are behind this screen at the anointing ceremony without the covering that represents the presence of God and it's a three-sided trilateral situation and there's a conspiracy that's no longer a conspiracy but they want to put the British sterling pound as the world reserve. Now that tells you that the mark of the king is going to be implemented to buy and sell the mark of the beast and this three-sided screen provides absolute privacy during the most sacred part of next week's coronation service for King Charles enduring the eyes of the world will not see the monarch being anointed Buckingham Palace and its makers said but remember they took the olive oil from Jerusalem and consecrated it and he will be anointed there's no doubt about that but if this tree is a corrupt tree it will not be bearing good fruit and it will come to its end King Jesus is coming the wrath is going to be poured out okay so the Royal English oak tree that's known as the king of trees in Britain. I'm going to get more into this topic. The tree is already on the coronation screen, that three-sided screen, which King Charles III will be coronated. And now knowing all of this plot and scheme and operation that they've had going for years and years, they've been putting these people in place, the Khomeinis and all of this stuff they've been orchestrating all of it it is a wicked wicked group of people and we have generals that are involved in that group so everyone is involved so now you can see how 
our prayers going up to the Lord are of extreme importance in these times. We must not stop praying and we must not stop lifting up the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They want to remove the gospel. They're going to do that eventually because we're holding them back from all of this orchestration. Don't you know that during the pandemic that the sh churches were literally shut down and anyone that tried to hold a church service in a building was arrested. So it's a precursor of things to come. And this is part two. I'd love to continue on with part three, but I'm going to save it for the next video so as not to make this too long. And I was giving you the whole detail about trilateral and the anointing screen being trilateral. And I think that there's a connection there. And this tree having the royal cipher, which in my dream was the mark of the king, the mark of the beast. And it is known as that, the mark of the king. If he becomes the king of this whole world government and one world religion, and he's bringing all the religions there with the things that are going to be in the multi-faith acceptance during, you know, his procession, and during the oath right after the fact that he's anointed, then you can see he will be the king, the world leader of all of it. And they've already been orchestrating this for years. This trilateral evidence is showing you what kind of tree we have with the royal cipher at the base near the roots. The axe is already laid to the root of the tree. Any tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. It's a warning from John the Baptist. And who was John the Baptist calling a brood of vipers? He was calling the people of the Sanhedrin, the leaders of the Jewish temple, the brood of vipers. They refused Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is what they're going to do again when they put this last earthly king, the anointed one, on the restored monarchy throne of Israel. And you just heard me say that this is their goal to restore monarchies and to eliminate the democratic system. We're under a republic, not a democracy. Look it up and you'll see the difference. But we're always told we're in a democracy because that's the left and they want you to think that. So there's a difference. So I already told you that the Lord had shown me that Israel is going to restore the monarchy, the deadly wound in the head by a sword, and that monarchy will be restored and live. But the wrath of God is coming for all of these people. We are not destined for the wrath as believers in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because we already trusted him and given our life to him. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua. And this is why we are not destined for the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. Jesus bore the wrath on the cross for us so we would not experience that time of wrath, of God's wrath poured out. How much more simple can it be? And if you say that we're going through the tribulation, then you're actually saying that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was for nothing, that he didn't really bear the wrath for us. And so I don't see how people can say that. What they're not seeing is that there are people that are not really dedicated to God. They have not given their heart. They have not been born again. And they're going to be here. But when we're taken out and the dead resurrected, they are going to be here. They're going to have to figure it out. There's going to be people that come to their senses, I believe. Uh, when they see the dead come up out of their graves, men's hearts will be failing them from fear. I would be terrified if, the, like a flash of lightning, we were gone. 
and I saw, you know, graves open, that's terrifying. So, you know, this is why I can't understand people having a post-tribulational view. There's going to be people left here, and there is an apostate church going on. Those people will be here. But I do not believe that those who are really following Christ at this point, we've already decided who our allegiance is to in our king. We will not receive the mark of the king that's the last earthly king to reign. We will not pledge allegiance because our allegiance is to the Lord God of hosts. His Messiah, he came in a body prepared for him by God as the second perfect Adam to reverse the curse of death of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, making the way for us to go back into the Garden of Eden-like state with the divine presence of God over us and the marriage of the Lord to his people and the land. And we are the bride, the Gentile bride brought in because the Jews at the temple rejected him. Now, some of them didn't, like Joseph of Arimathea. Some of them followed the Lord secretly. And I believe that there's rabbis that secretly know that he's the Messiah. But one day they will have their eyes open. God has a righteous remnant with the Gentiles. He's got a righteous remnant with the Jewish people. It's not all good and copacetic over there in Jerusalem. There's corrupt people in the government. And this Sanhedrin group wants to elevate themselves in their own self-righteousness to be the world's supreme court. So who do you think is the most eligible to be the anointed sitting upon the throne of Jacob, which is Jacob's pillow stone, Israel, their ancient throne, than King Charles III. Wait for part three. Shalom for now.